Hello, my name is Clint Holstead and this is Digital Electronics. The first lab is to download and install the software, Quartus 2 software, and then to perform the first tutorial, which is how to use the Quartus 2 schematic editor and the waveform editor. So the first one I will show you is the schematic editor and then we'll do the waveform editor later. So let's go ahead and get started. You open the Quartus software and you say file, new project. Next. It's imp very important to browse where you want to save the software because there or the file because it's probably going to put it in some default location. So for me, I'm going to put it in courses, digital, labs, and then this is the important part. Go to the folder and then you have to create a new folder. In this case, intro tutorial. Since I already have one, I'm going to call mine two, intro tutorial two. Descend inside of that where it's blank and then say select folder. The name of the project, you can call it main or whatever you want, but in this case the instructions say call it light. Next. Nothing to add. Next. The kit you have has the Cyclone 3, FBGA, pin count 484, speed grade 6, top 1. Next. Next. Finish. Now, normally you would click, double click the name of your project. In this case, we have no file. We have to say file new block diagram schematic. Okay, now we're ready to draw. This is what we want to draw. How do we add the parts? Click symbol tool, or you can I'm sure up here somewhere do the same thing, but I'm just gonna click this button to add the parts. This pops up. Click on the triangle, primitives, logic. The first thing we're gonna do is AND2 to AND gate. Place two of those. Escape. Part tool again. We're gonna add an OR gate. Click here and hit O. It'll jump down to your OR gates. We want to grab the two input OR gate. And then we want to hit escape. Part symbol again. The NOT gate. Place two NOT gates. Escape. Uh, left click on it. Rotate 90. And then rotate to 70. Now it's time to start drawing the wires. Follow the schematic. It, when you place your cursor over the pin, it will give you, it'll change. Notice how it, how it changes, your cursor changes to a wiring tool. Left click and hold, drag to where you want it, let go. draw it exactly the way it's drawn here. Left click hold, drag, release, click, release, left click, drag, release, continue to do that. Make sure you get it exactly on the pin, not off at all. You can move it later if you want. Notice that when you hover over the wire, it gives you a move tool and you can just drag it. it takes a little bit of practice. So now we have our output, we have two inputs. Next thing to do is we want to put the input and the output pins. The way you do that is click 
pen tool, input. Again, place, make sure you place the input exactly on the pin. Oh, see, I missed it right there. So that when you zoom in, um, you have it placed exactly. Now we're going to put an output. Uh, output. Uh, to zoom in and out, you can hit the control key and then roll your mouse button. That's the easiest way. And you kind of need to be zoomed out a little bit um, to place this output pin because it's causing a little bit of problems for me. There we go. Took a little bit for me to be able to get that. Now zoom in on it and make sure you you don't want to place it here when you don't want to place it here. You want to place it exactly on uh, the, the end of that. Okay. Now we can hit zoom. Actually just hit your control pin and, and kind of zoom out. Maybe go to the hand tool so you can move your schematic around. Uh, now we have an output pin, we have an input pin. Now, this is going to deviate from the instructions a little bit. I'm going to show you a little bit better way to do your pin assignment. So what is a pin assignment? Well, the idea is we have to get these input, this input and this output, we have to map it to your kit. Okay, this is your kit. And it has a lot of a lot of pins on here. And these pins, this is the actual uh, FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array. This is where all your digital schematics are going to be downloaded to, this one single chip. Everything else on this board just supports this one little chip. Um, so we need, it, this chip has a certain pinout. Um, and all those pins are mapped into a file. And we can just grab that file, import that, and then we won't, will not have to do so much work. So let me show you how to do that. Assignments, import assignments, dot, 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 browse to DE0 assignments, which I will upload to Moodle. You can do this for every homework assignment. Click OK. OK, now when you go to assignments assignment editor now you have all your pins already here these are most of the pins on the board so again looking at our tutorial what do we want to assign those to well, we want switch 0, switch 1, and LED. Um, and since we have the DE0 board, this is the pin names, pin J6, H5, and J1. But these should already be set up. All we need to do is tell the tool here that we want switch 0, switch 1, and LED G0. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Okay, so notice that we have switch 0 and switch 1, and we have LED G0. So what we can do is click on the tab back on your block description file, and we're going to name this. Make sure you click your little select tool. We're going to name this SW0 to match this. Double click. Well, let's see. Double click and then double click again. 
SW1. And for the output, double click, and we're going to call it LEDG0. Okay, so those are the names. Just make sure it matches something on here. Notice that currently these are all grayed out with question marks, okay? That's going to change in a minute, and I'll show you how. But before we do that, let's save it. The asterisk here means not save, so we're going to say save all. And the problem with this is it's probably going to try to get you to save it somewhere like my documents at first. What you need to do is remember to browse to where you really want to place them. Students always have problems with this, but uh, they lose their files and can't find them. That's because when you hit save, it's not going to save it in the folder that you created. It's going to save it somewhere else. So you have to browse to that location and find it. So I put mine here in lab source intro tutorial. So this is where I want to save it inside of my folder. Now you can see light.bdf does, does not have an asterisk. That means it's been saved. So now what we can do is I think we're ready to try to compile it. So you can just hit the run button. The, the tool is um, compiling it, synthesizing it, fitting it into the design, placing and routing it, all into that one single chip that we talked about. So it's trying to, to fit it into the logic that's available inside of here. Compilation was successful. Got a bunch of warnings. You got a bunch of green check marks over here, which is really good. You can close this report. Um, you can close your assignment editor. And notice now that on the screen you have switch zero has been assigned to pin J6, which if you go back to your tutorial document, J6 was exactly the pin that we wanted it to be assigned to. So it actually found the pin. If we go back up here to assignments, assignment editor, uh, you can see now that instead of having a question mark here, switch zero has an input pin symbol and switch one has an input pin signal and LEDG zero has an output pin symbol. So that's great. That's the easiest way to do it. So now we can download this and the way we do that is double click on program device sorry about that double click this pops up this should already be selected you should make sure your hardware has been set up to US blaster or you actually click this I think by default it says uh, no hardware so you have to make sure to go in here and say USB blaster uh, and then it would be ready you might it'll be ready to uh, program. Just hit start. It says 100% successful. So it's ready. Now I can't show you because I don't have a, a camera, but um, if if I did, then I could show you that um, this is working. Actually, it is possible. I do have a camera. Let me let me just grab this camera really quick, and I will pull it over here. This is my board. Now that I have it downloaded, uh, the lights no longer blink here. If I push this button, then um, the light is going to shine. And so you know that it's working. So once you get the light to glow. When you push the button, then you know that uh, everything is good to go. Actually, it's not the push button switches. You can put it on the push button, but uh, it's on the, tog the toggle switches. So here's the toggle switch. So see that the light 
here when you move the switches in different positions then the light will actually turn on. Uh, one thing to note is uh, the switches and the lights are active low logic um, which means that they're actually enabled when the signal is low so that is something that you need to take into consideration if um, you can always invert these outputs to get your positive logic or invert your inputs or your outputs. Anyway, that's the that's the design. Um, just screen capture this and take a video of it working uh, for credit and upload that to Moodle. And thank you very much.